here are some examples of other types of uh, executive function tasks that have been widely used. Uh, there's a letter memory task which taps into this ability called updating. Uh, and these, these kind of functional uh, associations have been used to categorize different kind of components that go into executive function. And um, Miyake and Friedman and others have found that these um, can be dissociated in different people. There's a little bit of individual differences in, in how good people are at these different aspects of uh, executive function. And so in the letter memory task, you just have to really hold on to the last uh, three letters. And so, you know, initially you see an M, you hold on to M, you get a K, you get M, K, P. And now when you get this T, you have this critical step where you need to essentially hold on to the last three. So you need to get rid of the M that you're holding on to from before and now only be holding on to the last three K, P, T. And so that updating of like getting rid of the first one, the you know oldest one and holding on to the new one kind of taxes your ability to really organize and, and update information in a strategic way. And we think this really taps into the basal ganglia, this ability to know kind of where to, to kind of encode these different pieces of information. And also this really interesting phenomenon of being able to essentially clear out something, forget about something, we think also depends on a kind of gating dynamic that comes from the basal ganglia. Uh, in shifting kinds of tasks, they're like task switching kind of tasks. Um, you have to do something consistently over time. So here we're naming the color. Uh, so you would say red, and then you would continue to say color. So you're saying green. But then if you get an S above the stimulus here, you now have to switch. And now you have to say triangle and circle. Um, again, you have repeat trials where you're focusing on the same aspect of the, sh of the stimulus and then switch trials where you have to update and switch. And you usually get a switch cost and additional slowing uh, on these trials here where you have to essentially update your task representation and, and forget about what you were doing before and reconfigure your uh, posterior cortical systems to now focus on a new task. And it's interesting, updating and shifting kind of seem like the same thing, uh, but this, the shifting tasks actually have different sources of individual difference variants. Um, and they're kind of more about the task set driving and uh, uh, controlling posterior cortex, whereas updating is more kind of just purely within the working memory system, kind of updating those, and they tend to be a bit more challenging, more items that you're having to juggle. Um, so those are some of the differences between those two. And then finally, we have these tasks, which could be categorized as inhibition, uh, but actually uh, in later work, uh, Miyake and Friedman have characterized these as um, kind of core active maintenance tasks. They really tap into your ability to hold on to information over time. And so here uh, in this anti-saccade task, one of the best examples of these, uh, you fixate on this central place, you get a very brief flash on one side of the screen or the other, and then what you have to do is instead of looking over there where the flash was, which is what your you know eyes and your brain want to do, you have to kind of control your overall behavior in a top-down, very non-intuitive, uh, uh, very low-frequency way, direct your attention to the opposite side. This is what's called the anti-saccade task. You need to direct your attention over to the other side of space in order to detect this very briefly flashed arrow and then you respond uh, whether the arrow is facing left or right. Um, and so this is, this is really challenging to, to get yourself to overcome this very prepotent uh, uh, response of saccading to where the flash is. And uh, this is very similar also to the Stroop task that we looked at. That's another example of these quote unquote inhibition slash active maintenance tasks. And there's a large debate in the literature about, you know, is it inhibition? Is it active maintenance? Um, and in general, from the neural models, we think it makes more sense to think about uh, active maintenance as the core ability, as we were talking about earlier. Uh, this ability to robustly activate and hold on to this task representation that says, you know, focus on the saccade going the other way, focus on color naming. Uh, that really seems to be a better description of what's happening in the brain rather than don't do this other thing, which is kind of more of the inhibition perspective. 
and in general there's fewer things you should be doing and a lot more things you shouldn't be doing so it's more efficient to think about what you should do and not what you shouldn't do. Uh, this is uh, just a summary of that data from uh, Friedman and Miyake looking at uh, these three different components of updating, shifting, and uh, going into this kind of overall construct of uh, a common executive function uh, with uh, separating out the kind of updating specific and shifting specific components. Um, and then inhibition essentially is subsumed by this kind of overall working memory ability. And finally, we can just briefly mention uh, there's uh, more cognitive uh, ideas about how working memory works and the executive function. Uh, this is from Alan Badley and Graham Hitch uh, and their collaborators developing this notion of a sort of tripartite organization of the executive and uh, really thinking about uh, the central executive interacting with two different uh, content areas of active maintenance or working memory, sort of verbal information in the phonological loop and a sort of spatial visual uh, representations. And so, you know, these constructs enable uh, explanation of a lot of different phenomena. We may have a separate kind of capacity limitations for verbal information relative to spatial, visual spatial information. And the idea that the central executive is kind of coordinating and updating information across these. So in fact, now we would think that the central executive is actually very much uh, summarizing the effects of the basal ganglia as well as the frontal cortex in kind of updating and coordinating uh, information across these different areas.